How many of you are below the age of uh, 16? Wow. And how many of you are over the age of 16? <laughs> Everybody. 16 is the average age of some of our global citizens in developing uh, world. Imagine what you were doing when you were 16 years old. If you were American, maybe you were having your first car. And if you were German, maybe you were having your first beer without your parents. <laughs> and probably a Berliner beer. I got to know one yesterday. Uh, or perhaps you were having your first date, or you were having your first job, or looking into universities. In South Sudan, less than 1% of girls attend high school. Only 5% of high school age students are enrolled in secondary schools. And only 27% of adults can speak and write. Just imagine. When I established a high school in South Sudan nearly seven years ago, it was the first secondary school hundred of miles around. And I did that because of my experience and my knowledge in the issues that our student faces and the struggle I had to go through myself before I went to America. Today, that school is a home to 420 students and 25 staff and teachers. But I didn't do it alone. I did that along with a group of people, my friends, my teams, and my colleagues. We aimed to provide access to quality education. We aimed to provide opportunities to people who can invest in infrastructure development, which is a key catalyst to uh, doing many other things in developing world. And we also aimed to empower the young minds who are the next generation to take on. But before that, I'm going to tell you a bit of my story. In 1987, I was forced to leave my country, together with over 30,000 unaccompanied minors of Sudan, a group that later became well known as the Lost Boys of Sudan. We had to leave our families sometime willingly or sometime forced out because of war circumstances. And we did not have guidance or maps or any modern kind of tools to look for a direction of where to go. The country was at war and everybody was looking for a safety, and when you find yourself with a group of people, you follow the advice of adults who were with you. On my own, I left my village, and I thought the journey would end for a day. Days became months, and months became years, and I was separated from my family for 17 years. I had to walk on barefoot across over 1,000 miles. I had to sleep in forest, hearing the lion roars. I had to swim across uh, 
free vest and swam that were infested with crocodiles. I had to walk the unforgiven African savanna with many other young people. When all of that was said and done, I resettled in the refugee camps and got a privilege of resettling to the United States in 2001. By the time I came to the US, I was 22 years old. And I also had learned a lot about our global community. I like reading and I, I taught myself with a lot of things and the world around me. And I first flew to New York. Just imagine coming from where I came from and I've never seen a big city, leave alone Berlin. I flew to New York, I landed there, I have to drive on the road, on the highway. I had a lot of my device and my skills and when we were on a highway, I almost asked my driver to drive at the edge. In case there is an accident, we can branch out. And I resettled in Atlanta. But by this time, uh, my country, South Sudan, have lost over 2.5 million people during the period of 1983 to, 2000, to later 2005. And at 2001, when I arrived in the US, this data was being reported. We saw a picture before of a child that was being approached by a bat. And I couldn't keep quiet because I have now fully became a member of the global community and I could speak out. That is when I decided to pen my story and with the help of Dave Eggers, you have that book in your hands these days. I think in German it is called Vat Kigang, something like that. And, but I thought about one thing. I thought about a word that I learned in East Africa called Harambe. I thought about what I need to do to be able to use the privilege of becoming a member of global community to also help the dispossessed people back in my homeland. And with that, we published the book and I started a foundation. And with the idea of Harambe in my mind, if you don't speak Kiswahili, Harambe means coming together as a community to face the challenges to help one another. And as members of the global community, we must come together. When I started the project, I went back to my country. And we decided to invest in education program. We went on to establish a high school, as I told you before, and building high school was challenging. There were no tarmac roads to travel. Aircraft were very expensive to hire. And the place was almost inaccessible. So what we did is we set up our school and I decided that I was going to educate our children to become contribution, contributing members of our global community. So when we enrolled our students, we not only educate them about classrooms, matters, and curriculums, we also train them to become uh, leaders of their own communities. As you can see here, our students in chemistry learned how to manufacture soap. They learned how to manufacture jellies and they learn how to manufacture shocks for their local community. These are things we can hardly import, especially given that the country is now uh, facing another political turmoil. But our, our school community is able to serve a larger community around. 
that is part of the signed work and sign experiment that our students are involved in. You can see some of the student leaders conduct debates and discuss community development issues and social action teams, how they as students in high school go out to help some of their own. We also have agriculture programs for our students and with that we use their produce from their school farms to supplement their nutritionals and uh, also help members of the community that are vulnerable. Uh, you can see that we have a spot programs. In fact, uh, this year the entire school was supporting the German teams. Uh, and one of the main reasons was that Tom Tickfer was one of the people who came to the school site. Everyone watched his movie, the perfume, and all of that, and they feel they, are, they have connection with Germans. <laughs> that is the team you see there. Uh, you see some of our girls uh, discussing issues to do with gender inequality in the community, issues to do with teaching young mothers in the community to know how to give prescriptions. And you can see this is the rice field. The students are involved in agriculture program and they have, we have a rice farm that we go to to help others. These are members of the girl guides and the scouts. They are a student but if you meet them you will think they are community leaders. Before the game, they have to give a salute, as you see. This is the chalk production unit. Uh, I think people have forgotten about chalks in our uh, countries these days. It's still very much used uh, where the school is located. Uh, but given all of this, and as members of our global community, sometimes I ask myself, and also I like to ask, people these questions. Why is it so difficult for somebody like me to succeed in our global community today? Why, what environment are we creating for those who do not succeed? And why as the world becomes so global, so small, are some of our global citizens allowed to behave in their own national ways? You see, I like to cut this short. No culture has it all figured out. We all are members of one entity, and that is humanity. And for the, global, for the globalization to meet its goals, we all should work hands in hands with one, in, with one another, because we are realizing that every day and every given week, we have so much in common than we at some time think. If you look at this, let me go on. Uh, what we have done in our small way was just establishing a high school. But we have realized that this high school is also the village. It is the community, it is the country, and it is the way we are going to raise young people who would have the capacity to help our global community meet its goal. I have a quote that I like uh, giving, and the only way our children will be able to feel what Henry Hensworth Longfellow once said, eh, that I have an affection for a great city. I feel safe in the neighborhood of men, and I enjoy the sweet security of the streets 
is working together hands in hands, whether in Berlin or in New York or in Los Angeles, in, in Lagos, in Nairobi, wherever there is that globalization, global connection we need is to work together to realize the global community that is a safe home for everyone. I would like to uh, ask each and every one of you to join us in our journey to provide access to quality education in areas where nobody work or nobody want to go. Uh, I will appreciate the time you've given to listen to me. And that is the little story I want to share with you.